case in the state, one of the cases you really explained here. Merrick's submission to test. Okay, good evening. It is uh, 7.02. I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Finance to order. <laughs> board of Selectmen. Wow, I just promoted this. Look at that. Um, call the Board of Selectmen to order. Thank you, Sarah. Um, our first item of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. And because she's so feisty tonight, I'd rec recognize Selectman Musk will lead us. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, four of the five selectmen are present this evening. Selectman Nordell sent an email indicating he was unavailable to do a personal commitment. Um, so we're all, all who will be here are present and accounted for. Before we go further, um, I'd like to ask that we add agenda item 9G, which is discussion and, and Authorization for an MOU between the Town of East Windsor and Westfield State University's uh, Masters of Public Administration program. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to item 9G in the business um, regarding a number of understanding uh, for the Town of East Windsor and the college team is Westfield, Westfield State, State University. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right. Um, so we will get to that. Approval of payments. There are two sets in front of us. The first one for consideration and approval are September 2nd, 2021. Peg, thank you for taking care of these. This is a robust package. To approve the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes from September 2nd, 2021. Is there a second? Oh, second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman D'Souza. Uh, yes, in our package tonight and also the email that was sent yesterday um, on the end of the September 2nd meeting, there's two pages that are duplicate. Um, they start off with the economy, so the planning and development. Those two need to be removed. Oh, that's, that's, that's probably a terrible error from my office. It, it just <laughs> was an accident, however. Without those pages, no, that's a that's a screener. They're well, it's actually not, it's probably my office error. So, we'll just post it properly. If you could just note in the minutes that that's what we're going to do, so they know that I don't think you need to read those two minutes. No, I don't think we can remove those two pages. Any other uh, corrections from September 2nd? I just uh, motion to accept the minutes. I'm going to call that as presented. Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? 16. So, the board of selectmen regular meeting minutes from September 16th, 2021. Is there a second? Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Any corrections? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. So carried. Thank you, Peggy. Public participation. This is one of two opportunities on the agenda for the public to address the Board of Selectmen. Um, I'm going to first ask if there's anybody here physically present who would like to address the Board about anything. Um, and then I'll turn to the folks who are joining us um, online as well. Is there anyone physically present who would like to address the board of selectmen? Okay. There will be another opportunity later in the meeting. Um, is there anybody joining us virtually online who would like to address the board of selectmen? If you would, uh, please turn your camera on, unmute yourself, and identify yourself by name and address for the record. Okay. There, there again, there will be an opportunity later in the meeting. Um, Next is communications. This is a this is happy fun stuff. Um, so as of as of now, we've sent out more than eighty percent, probably closer to ninety percent of the approved um, erase grant uh, erase grants to the recipients, and and I've included here uh, a small collection of the thank you notes that we've received to date. I thought that would be nice to see um, that that the work that we did is going um, 
it has been appreciated and, and noticed. So I wanted to share those with you guys. There have been a couple others we've gotten since the hack was put together. Um, second one is, uh, I know domestic use is an issue near and dear to select Muska. So we've again included a proclamation for the town dedicating uh, the month or commemorating the month of October as Domestic Violence Prevention Month. So that is 6B. Now we're on to resignations. to accept the resignation of Maria Ramori from the Economic Development Commission with regret. There's a second. I would just note that she's resigning as an alternate member. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, no. <clears throat> Carry. The reappointment of uh, Betsy Elizabeth Laborious to the Housing Authority as a regular member for a term expiring October 1st, 2026. Is there a motion? I'll probably make that motion for Elizabeth Laborious for the East Windsor Housing Authority to get a regular member expiring October 1st, 2026. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Betsy, thank you for your continued service. That's a, a very appreciative community for the work that you folks do. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So carry. Reappointment of Carla Bagdikian as a member of the Parks and Rec Commission, as a regular member for a term expiring October 1, 2026. I'll make that motion to accept Kara Bagdikian um, for the Parks and Recreation Commission as a regular member of the term expiring October 1, 2026. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Now we're on to new appointments. We have two. Um, the first is uh, the appointment of David Wieson as an alternate member of the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term expiring October 1, 2024. Is there a motion? I move to appoint David Leeson to the Planning and Zoning Commission as an alternate member for a term expiring October 1st, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman Musk. Yeah, I would just like to note that I did have a professional business relationship with Mr. Leeson from 2011 to 2015. And um, since then, I'm glad to see that he's moved to town and getting involved. And I think he'll be a great addition to this commission. Thank you, Sarah. Any other comments? I just noted that Jimmy Thurs has recommended that he's on that commission, so I'm sure um, it may be an issue. I don't know the individual, so I'll be interested, but Sarah's input is all valuable. So, so, thank you, Sarah. so I'll share. Um, Sarah and I did speak about this, and I also, you know, it's not very often you get an application to sit on a board commission from somebody who don't know the town this size. So, so I actually did do the reference check and uh, he came back with, with very favorable comments from the folks that I spoke with. Um, so I'm excited to see somebody new stepping forward and I think it's uh, that could be a good addition to the commission. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Next is the appointment of Brian Turley as a regular member of the Economic Division Economic Development Commission for a term expiring January 1, 2024. I have a motion. I'll move to appoint Brian Turley to the Economic Development Commission as a regular member for a term expiring January 1st, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. I would like to thank Mr. Turley for stepping forward and agreeing to serve on this commission. Um, I think that his professional experience will bring um, a much a very beneficial perspective to the commission. And I, I hope that um, we can bring that commission further along in terms of helping the town's future development. So thank you very much for stepping forward. No, thank you for accepting my, you know, I look forward to trying to help out the town. I do appreciate it, Brian, thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you very much, Commissioner Turley. Okay, now we're gonna go on to unfinished business. I'm gonna share my screen because I have an update on South Road. I wanna share with you and for the record. Uh, I find it. Oh. 
So as you know, we've been trying to rectify this circumstance uh, that the tenants on that property find themselves in for quite some time. Um, the first two hurdles were overcome earlier in the spring when we had bond commission authorization uh, to lift the, low, uh, the prohibition on subdivision. And then we went back and got legislative authorization to lift the low income restriction, which allows that property to be conveyed freely. Um, so the next step we have to go through is the variance process. Um, and once variances are presented to and approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals, the next step would be to do with E24 referral, which is a statutory requirement to convey property or to convey public property um, submitted on, on behalf of the residents by the town to the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, at which point we'll be able to uh, convey the property to those homeowners whose homes sit on the property who are interested in um, acquiring their land. So this is, it's been a long process. This is the third at least time that the, the Board of Selectmen in previous iterations have sought to remedy this situation, but we're doing it in such a way so that there should be no jeopardy to the future purchasers of the property. Um, and, and that was has been a real concern over time is to make sure we weren't inadvertently setting up the homeowners for some future jeopardy. By doing it in this uh, slow but methodical and deliberative process, I think we're getting past that. Um, and if the timeline holds, we should be able to bring this to a resolution, certainly by the middle of January, if not sooner than that. Um, so this is, I'm excited to have this one done. Any questions or comments on this? So the boundary lines have all been set for all the parcels? That's the next thing after the variances. So what we're doing is we're submitting, as the, the single property owner for the large parcel, we're submitting to ZBA a notice that we're going to have a litany of variances, at which point we'll then su uh, submit a new subdivision map to the town clerk's office and an 824 referral to PDC. So, th and that's an outline here, but we're going in sequence to make sure that we're following the statutory construction and the process that we need to in terms of conveying the property. Thank you. So, it's progress. Any questions or comments on this? Sure. The race grant update. Um, so we have, um, there was one applicant who had been disqualified due to having relocated their business out of town. That applicant actually appealed and was able to furnish evidence that he did not, in fact, uh, relocate all of his business out of town. He was able to prove through personal property tax bills, both current and prior. Um, that he still had an active presence here. So uh, I asked George to go through the review process for that applicant based on the merits. Um, and he was one of the very first applicants in the door. Um, so George is in the process of reviewing that and we'll have an additional update and a recommendation at our next meeting on the 21st. As I said, um, we now have, have approved $1,069,700 of, of which about 90% of that is already out the door and in people's hands. Um, so that is, that's a, a, we're progressing very, very well. The next step that I want to do with this and, and what will be likely the last step is uh, the presentation of the termination report on the project to the board. Um, that's something that's being drafted by, I'm drafting part of it, George is drafting part of it, and Lily Bluestein, who's a, a young lady who's been helping us with this, is drafting part of it as well. Our target date for submission to the board on that is October 21st. So our meeting two weeks from tonight, we should have a pretty robust presentation on um, the, the project, its history, its successes and outcomes, um, so that we can kind of put a bow on this, but that's pretty close to done. Um, actually, I'll, I'll share this too. We've had, I'll say now four other towns express interest in the, pro in the program and see, seek in some way to emulate it. Um, so that's, it's exciting to see that, that we kind of have led the charge on this and that it might be adopted by other communities. Amy actually just got a new one today. Um, any other questions or comments on the erase grant for now? Okay. Uh, our next discussion is to include Len Norton and Joe Sauerhofer. Um, Len is tied up in CIP at the moment, but uh, we, we'll just put it on pause and one sec. And he's prepared to. 
in the meantime, let's go on to 9B, which I don't think will take very long. And I know that the, the building is waiting. Um, so could I have a motion to uh, table 9A and take up 9B? Make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, we'll take up agenda item 9B. Ms. Hilton, are you with us? Yes, we're over Zoom. I'm with Kevin. Hello. Well, first, I would like to say congratulations to you both. Um, so we are, Len, just bear with us just for a couple minutes. It shouldn't take very long. Um, so congratulations to you guys. Do you have a wedding date? Yeah, October of next year. Mm -hmm. So I used, I, when I was engaged, I used to say that I'm going to bring my fiance. <laughs> Nice, I like that. <laughs> That's a dad joke. I've got a couple of them now. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are our first non government applicants under this new process to allow the consumption of alcoholic beverages at the park. Um, okay. There is a, a process that's prescribed on the second page that we're still working through internally. You guys submitted everything fine. There's no problem at all with that. And that's for uh, in front of the board for them to consider tonight. Um, the there are other departments that need to sign off on this. So just so you're aware of what I'm going to do, we have a sign off from the Parks and Rec Director. Um, we do not have a sign off yet from the Police Department or the Fire Marshal. So after the board asks you any questions um, that they may have, I'm going to ask for a motion to authorize me to sign your permit contingent upon approval from the Police Chief and the Fire Marshal. That way you're able to keep moving things along. I noticed that the date is just uh, two and a half weeks away. So we don't want to jam you up, but uh, there are some administrative things that need to be done internally that, that should not affect um, what's going on with you. And I'll, I'll look to get you a final approval as quickly as practical. Okay, right. sounds good. Sounds good. So it, sh it shows that you are having uh, 20 to 25 people at the engagement party, is that right? Correct. Yep. And what type of alcohol do you intend to serve? Um, wine and... I'm sorry, just wine and beer, no hard alcohol. Questions or comments for the happy couple? <laughs> Nobody? No. <laughs> Hi, Steve Frank. Um, congratulations on your engagement. Um, congratulations if it gets approved, or you'll be the first non, as Jason said. Um, but being the first, we're hoping you set we'll set the example um, for a good afternoon um, for the town on your behalf. Uh, because we would hate to have to reverse what we uh, put forward. So um, congratulations um, on your future together. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Do you guys live in town? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we do. Yeah, Been here five years. Yeah, we're on Scott Avenue, not too far. Any other questions or comments? So I would ask for a motion to authorize the first select and assign the application contingent upon approval from the police chief and the fire marshal. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All opposed? Congratulations, you guys. My office will be in touch with you just as quickly as we can. It's been sent to the other signatories, but I don't have a response yet. So uh, I, expect, I expect either tomorrow or Tuesday. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thanks. Thank you. That's cool. Uh, I would ask for a motion to return to the call of the agenda and take up agenda item 9A, the discussion of an added appropriation for household waste. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Director Norton, how are you this evening? Living the dream. Would you and Joe like to come up or use our podium or how do you want to do it? He has all material I've been in there. How's that going? Just about to start talking about my stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, we, you know, we haven't asked for a uh, we did a, a few years back, and then we just haven't asked for the also hazardous waste uh, collection or drop off, whatever. This year, because or actually probably 
past two years, just because the budget gets great. We realize there's only so many hours to go around and things were kind of mellow for a while, but we've been getting a ton of calls lately. It's been a few years now and people are, I mean, they're hanging on to it for now. We, we haven't picked up a whole lot like places they should leave it, but you know, that's bound to start happening. So we, we've shown up at work in the morning and at the gate that's closed, there's tails of stuff. Mm. So if we could get some funding to, to run one of them, um, we would like to do it. Well, the last time we did it was 2018. Yeah. I was so gonna we, ask, you, you said that for the last couple of years you haven't asked for it. When, how long has well, it been since you asked for it? No, 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 it? we've asked for it every year in the budget and it's the first oh, thing that gets cut. This year I did put it in this year. This year, I actually didn't even put it in until I just because I realized I, I could have added it, but I didn't. I made note that that's what it would be, but I. Uh, that's right. I do remember that. And I also recall the Board of Finance asked a specific question about why it wasn't in there. So, yeah. so there's there's because an appreciation that, that this is something that people do have an expectation of from time to time. And we're doing field between 20 to 50 phone calls a week. Really? Uh, what do I do with this? What do I do with that? Where can I get rid of this? Where can I get rid of that? People ask me when, all the time. And then, when well, are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? It's it. A lot of people have been working from home. They're yeah. cleaning yeah. their basements and yeah. garages. Yeah. So the demand has risen substantially. And and you've provided us the examples of things that would be allowable and not allowable. And yes. And what's the cost that you're asking for? Thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand gets it done, mm -hmm. and that would be typically a Saturday. Same thing as the bulky waste thing. It'd be a Saturday at the highway garage. And who would staff it? We would. We have to bring in an outside company to do it because we need bills of lading to get rid of the stuff. We would staff it in house. Has it always happened at the garage? No, it's always been here. But that's what I recommend. And it's, it's also garage. been summer, fall. Well. We'll have to advertise it for a few weeks and then it'll be cold. We can use the garage that way there we have shelter and heat. So $30,000 will require a town meeting. Okay. Then I guess it's going to be even closer to winter time. That means the earliest that I could notice a town meeting on a regular night would be the first meeting in November. Um, unless we had a special one, because the board of select the board of finance meets on the twentieth. We meet again on the twenty first. That's not enough time for me to notice it. I don't think I can do it for twenty. Okay, then that is what it is, and that's that's a good consideration. I don't. I mean, we've been we've been squeezing. We've had right. several of these, and we were we've been squeezing the company at twenty. At, you know, and basically, this is what we have. You're going to have to do it, and, and they've done it. We've been using environmental services, and they've been very good to us, but. You can only squeeze so much. Oh. Questions or comments from members of the board? No, I mean, it seems like it's it's time. If you're getting that many calls a week, that people need some place to put their items. So I didn't want to cut last year anyway, so I'm happy to see that we're going to do it. <laughs> I just got a big generator that hasn't run. Uh, you know, I, I acquired it and hasn't run in. A few years and it had 10 gallons of bad gas in it, so I'll be bringing it over. You know, and I, I'm sure there's lots of people that have that situation. You just don't want that stuff sitting around or getting dumped down on a drain or something. I think it's long overdue. Well, seems like we're coming from a good place. <laughs> so um, do you have a do you have a quote or is this a, a budget number? It's a budget number. Okay. Because they won't give us a hard quote because it all depends on. What you take in. Okay, so it could come in below that. It could come in below. That's why I say we can't. I don't want to tell you it's 20,000, but it, it will not exceed 30. Okay. Um, so could I ask for a motion for an added appropriation for $30,000 for hazardous waste collection? Uh, recommend it to the Board of Finance and approve forward to town meeting. Oh, that's how I do it. That's how I do it. We, okay. we, we pre-approve it to town meeting now. So it's okay. I got this. I figured out, I figured out how to save you two weeks. Right. I'll move that we 
we uh, recommend an added appropriation of thirty thousand dollars for household waste disposal, um, hazardous waste collection, to the board of finance. Then to be, if approved, to be submitted to town. Right. Second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for bringing this forward. Uh, yes. Okay. We're now on to 9C discussion and approval of, of the creation of an East Windsor Arts and Culture Committee. Um, this was brought to me by um, a town staff person who's also a resident um, and uh, Debbie Williams from Park and Recreation. And, um, Deb is interested in um, seeing the town be uh, more promoting of and supportive of arts and culture. Um, and so she's, she asked me, how do, how do we go about this? What do we do? What, how do we do this? And I said, well, you know, here are the questions that we need to answer in terms of formulating a charge. Uh, so she and I worked on this. My staff uh, in the office helped with this as well. But before you is uh, a charge establishing the arts and culture committee and the parameters for the appointments and the terms of service. Um, that's the, the concept in general. Uh, I'll do my best to answer any additional specifics, but um, this is really uh, staff and resident driven. So um, can I uh, entertain any questions from the group? So their goal was actually to develop the commission, meet with other people, and then tourism will come in if there's like something happening at the Broadbrook Opera House as the arts. They can promote that through the tourism bureau. Mm -hmm. that what they mm -hmm. that yep. And and as an example, um, Parks and Rec was trying to get funding through Sustainable CT uh, for a mural along um, the exit to exit 45. Yeah. Uh, and that that is one of those things that an arts and culture commission could be promoting and could be supportive of. Um, they actually, I think, pivoted that same project off of that location and had suggested that it be on the south facing side of the Broadbrook Opera House. And that was moving forward until there was a dispute between the owner and the artist. Yeah. Um, but by and large, this is, Deb has been kind of flirting around this concept for a little while and she, she's asked for um, some more official support in terms of, of making progress. Um, she had provided me with a, a list of people that um, she would like to see seated on the commission um, and or the committee I suppose. Um, it's a, it's a good group for what she's trying to do. Um, so I, I, I'm fully supportive of what she's trying to do. I think it, it adds character to the community and I think that that's um, nothing but benefit. So what are the, if, if we enact this are the term 18 months? Or? Yeah, and that's because it's not gonna be a commission or at this point anyway, it's not gonna be a committee established by ordinance. So the charter only allows for the creation of commissions on an 18 month basis unless they're formulated by ordinance. So if they come back to us and say, we like this 18 month thing, or we like this, this commission, we wanna make it a more formal thing, we formulate an ordinance, take it to town and approve it. But uh, in, the, in the interim, it's established by this board on an 18 month basis and will be renewed as such. Okay. You're tough to read with a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. All right, good. <laughs> um, so if there are no other questions or comments, I'd ask for a motion to approve the resolution and the charge. I'll make a motion that we um, accept the resolution to establish the East Winter Arts and Cultural Committee um, as presented. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, what's next? Okay. Um, so it's that time of year again. It's, it's uh, annual meeting time. Um, the charter requires that we have one annual town meeting and then special special town meetings as called. Um, so our annual town meeting, there are a couple of things that we need to do as a, as a pro forma circumstance. Um, 
you need to approve, uh, we need, the town meeting needs to authorize the first selectman and the finance director to borrow on behalf of the town from time to time, which is for operating expenses. It's not for anything beyond, you know, keeping the lights on and paychecks rolling. Um, there is uh, an authorization uh, for the first selectman to receive certain grants from the Department of Transportation. Um, and there's also the acceptance of the annual town report. Uh, we also typically uh, do some sort of a thematic meeting to because we try and bring boards and commissions and the general public together. In the past, we've done things like the Freedom of Information uh, training. Um, rather than just me come up with a, a concept for this one, I thought I'd throw it out there and see if there are any particular topics that you all wanted to see. Um, because I have a little bit of time to work on this and bring a, a speaker or a conversation around a specific topic to the annual town meeting. But if I throw it out there to you guys, otherwise I'll figure it out. Can we think about it a little bit? Sure. So I'll make, I'll, we'll flag this and make sure that it's on for the 21st. That's all right. Um, I would like to do it later in the month if possible. We also typically have done this. It's actually not uncommon for the annual meeting to happen between the week of Christmas and uh, New Year's. The reason for that, although the holiday week is a little, little difficult sometimes, um, it gives the maximum amount of time for us to satisfy our charter-driven requirements of having the annual town meeting and having the annual town report and the financials from the audit in place at the same time. So the closer you get to the beginning of the month, the more in jeopardy that, that can become. So later is better. So our, our two regular meetings in December are December 2nd and 16th. I would strongly suggest we not aim for December 2nd. Um, even the 16th, if we were to push it back to the last week of the month, that gives us enough time. Um, but we can talk about that next week, especially when Charlie's here. I also wanted to throw out, you know, if there's topics that you want to have a speaker on, I need a little bit of time to facilitate that. I would like to see at least for part of the meeting, because we have um, a lot of uh, staff that are new and a lot of board and commission members, I'm sure, on the world who some of the staff is. Um, so um, I would like maybe some type of a meet and meet um, kind of thing for the commission and the new employees um, and the fire departments and the ambulance association and maybe give a little bit of background as to where they are and um, what they went through during the pandemic um, to service the community, that type of thing. That's a good idea. Uh, I like that. So the charter requires that town meetings start at 730. Um, so what I might do is um, organize kind of a roundtable discussion for like a six o'clock, um, which that, that allows towns, because if we do it on a, on that, on a Thursday, town staff will still be here. Um, so that's not an imposition on, on them or on budgets, but it does give an opportunity to facilitate kind of a, a conversation or at least a, a meet and of sorts. So that, I like that as an idea. And then you can sing Christmas carols. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. You guys don't want that at all. Hank's hurt me for a little bit. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a great idea. Um, if there, well, again, I'll, I'll throw it on there for two weeks from now, but I, I'm going to kind of asterisk that as a winner. I like that. Okay. So it could kind of be like a an evening staff holiday party, almost kind of thing with elections. And with, you know, with COVID hitting in a year and a half of Zoom meetings and stuff, it really doesn't get people a chance to, to know each other. Oh, you're taller than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, well, you have a face. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> uh, Okay. The next one is a pro forma agenda item. Um, this is uh, an MO, MOU between the town and the Greater Hartford Transit District that allows us to access a 50% reimbursement grant to continue the operation of um, the shuttle service that we have. This is separate and apart from the, the rides that we get through the um, senior side. Any questions or comments on the agreement? Again, it is it is boilerplate. It's an annual renewal. We've seen this now. This is our third time collectively seeing this. I'll make a motion to allow 
first elected to sign into the this year 2022 Ballard Ride Operating System grant contract. Second. Wait, motion is <laughs> made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any vote? Aye. All those opposed, please say no. I'll leave the witnesses. Um, motion clearly passes. See how many that they're going to print them in there and sign them on the boat tonight. That was. Print your name below the line and sign it both. Is it print above the line? Yeah, it doesn't really matter, but that's what they're asking for. Okay, while she is finishing that, we'll move on to tax refunds. We'll move to approve the tax refunds totaling $2,791.16. Is there a second? Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, next. Um, and I apologize for the, the lateness of, of getting this out to you. Um, so here's here's what I'm doing with this one. Uh, as you know, I, I finished my graduate work at Westfield State University uh, in their MPA program, and I've maintained a relationship with that uh, program as, as well as I'm able. The administrator for the program reached out and asked if there would be any opportunity for um, synergies or overlap between what's going on in the town and what he's working on in one of the classes in the program called Organizational Behavior. Um, so after some brainstorming with the professor, what I asked him to, to do would be to have his students do an, an assessment of sorts of a couple of departments in town government to determine the effectiveness, the efficiency, and the customer service delivery um, within the permitting process in our land use departments. Um, so if this is a graduate level study, um, it is uh, primarily an academic exercise, but if there are uh, recommendations for improvements that come out of that. It's something that we may be able to implement. Because of their um, university policies in the, um, the IRB, which is the Independent Review Board, I think, uh, they, um, they ask for an MOU between the, the uh, host organization and the students. And um, because it's an MOU, I'm not supposed to sign them without authorization from the board. Uh, so I wanted to bring this to you guys and, and ask your uh, consent and answer any questions that you have. Yeah, it, you know, and it's it's at least a good opportunity for us to foster a relationship with nearby university, which hopefully could you know have bear fruit in other ways. You know, maybe we start recruiting from there. Maybe um, there are other ways we can integrate graduate study work into the operations of, of the town government. In entering into this, um, and I don't have problems with regular study, I just have a problem with um, the legalities of it. Um, would they be covered under any insurance to the town? Through the school. It would be through the school. Okay. So they would pick up all the lines that would be. Yeah, and, and they're, they're effectively conducting interviews and looking at budget appropriations and um, processes that are implemented in other communities. Um, so 
the, the survey results for or the interview results for staff here will be kept anonymous from me. Um, so it becomes truly academic in that sense. I'll get feedback from um, people who are actually walking the walk um, through third party interviews um, so that it becomes a, a tool instead of something that's interrogatory. Yeah, um, I just got down to the financial quarters of my question, so I apologize. I wasn't reading it as fast as so it's in there. Can I have a motion to authorize my signature on the memorandum of understanding between the town of East Windsor and Westfield State University? I'll make that motion. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Have you met Michael yet? I have met. Yes. You know? No. Um, the only one on here I have not. No, I've met them all now. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Two seconds. Thank you. I think that's a great opportunity for us to put that. They're, they're excited to um, get work done. It's a, it's a good group. Okay. Selections reports. So, mine's already on social media, <laughs> but um, for those present, I'll, I'll hit some of the high points. Um, first thing I want to talk about is over the last couple of weeks, I've had, I've had the opportunity on four different occasions to meet with the new superintendent. Um, each time I, I have sincerely come away impressed with, with Dr. Tudrin's sincerity, um, his collaborative spirit and his dedication in our school district board. Uh, he's taking on a very difficult task, assuming his role at the beginning of the school year in the midst of a pandemic um, and trying to hit the ground running with, with both feet. And I think that um, he really will be a steady hand to lead the schools once he's, he's fully situated. Um, we've already established standing committees between key staff in town and the district to strengthen collaboration and communication, particularly between facilities and public works and between the school's finance office and ours. Um, those meetings happen quarterly and involve the principals in each of those departments and Dr. Tudrin and myself. And he and I also have standing meetings set up on a regular basis so that he and I can stay on the same page. Um, he, is, he is gonna be a good addition to the leadership of, of that district and I'm looking forward to working with him. I wanna thank Ed Philippone for reaching out to IBEW to secure the installation of a new telephone pole on the uh, south parking lot of Town Hall. Um, it is in close enough proximity to the existing one. So we'll once again be able to hang banners for community events, um, which is something that we had had, but, but went away when the parking lot expansion happened a few years ago. So that was, um, that was Ed Philippone who, who reached out to them and got that done. And I wanted to thank him for that. Um, in the recently approved contract between the town and the supervisors union, a provision was included at my urging to ensure that the performance evaluations uh, that performance evaluations were required annually. Uh, compensation adjustments for supervisors will be partially based on those evaluations. And while the review period does not end until the end of the fiscal year, um, I, I did think it's important to communicate goals between management and staff for the review period. So over the last few weeks, um, I've met with each of my direct reports that are governed by that contract um, to lay out what their goals are for the coming eight month period. Um, on June 30th, the contract, uh, on June 20th, the contract between, June 20th, on June 30th, the contract between the town and the clerical union expired. So we're in the midst of negotiations for that contract now. Um, Sarah and I sit on that team and we'll be once again strongly pushing for the inclusion of performance evaluations in that contract as well. Um, the town has effectively completed work on the race grant, which I talked about, and we expect the final report on that to be in two weeks. On the 28th uh, of September, I met with representatives from the Department of Public Health and the Windsorville Water Association to discuss testing and management of their community well. Uh, that services about 13 homes in the Windsorville section of town. The DPH is contending that the well now requires extensive management, uh, but they are working with the neighbors um, to make sure that um, 
They can chart a reasonable pathway forward that ensures both water um, water quality continues to be monitored and that it's not overly burdensome on the affected residents. As you all know, the emergency radio system that supports town departments is significantly beyond its anticipated useful life and in need of replacement. The town has hired an expert consultant to evaluate our system and our needs and our available options moving forward. And the, the most recent step taken on that project um, was to sit down with each of the affected departments to determine what their individual needs are. Those departments include the police department, the fire department, East Windsor EMS, DPW, Parks and Recreation, public schools, emergency management, and town hall. It is an expansive project. Um, a report is expected from the consultants at some point in October or in early November. September was senior center month and the month culminated in a big celebration on September 30th. I was joined by Senator Anwar and Deputy First Selectman Sousa and a full crowd as we celebrated the good work done at the center as well as staff service anniversaries. Um, according to statistics compiled by Advanced CT, East Windsor is 10% older than the state average, a trend likely to continue as the baby boom generation continues to age. Our senior center is a fantastic place for socialization and for senior service needs, but if we're going to meet the growing demands for services likely to be needed in the future, we need to start thinking seriously about finding a more accommodating space than the current location of the Broadbrook Fire, Fire Department. On Friday, uh, Melissa Maltesi and I met with Harry Evangelou uh, from the Opera House Players. As you know, the Opera House Players have a longstanding history in the town of East Windsor, um, but they lost their rental space at the Broadbrook Opera House a few years ago and they moved to Enfield. It's my hope that an arrangement will be able to be worked out that will allow them to maintain an East Windsor presence, whether that be with a new permanent space here, a rental space for shows, or even utilization of the band shell at the park for occasional shows there, which I personally think would be wicked cool. Um, and then I talked uh, also a little bit about the organizational behavior course. The last thing I wanted to mention is that the town is seeking submissions for our next edition of the Five Village Voice. Uh, any community civic group is invited to submit something for inclusion in the next edition by October 25th. Submissions can be sent to Melissa Lavelle in my office, um, but note also that the publication is expected to hit mailboxes on or about December 16th. So time your submissions accordingly. Um, and that's all that I have. All right. Yeah, the only meeting I had scheduled um, for the last few weeks was the Economic Development Commission, and that was canceled due to a lack of forum. And their November meeting, as of right now, due to a conflict with Election Day on November 2nd, um, that also um, is not taking place. Um, but in the uh, cancellation notice that I received, it also said that if um, we appoint somebody to that board, um, they may do a special meeting. So um, for our new person, thank you for stepping forward. You'll get something in the mail from somebody or via email um, at some point to let you know the next meeting is going to be. Thank you again, Brian. Yep. Um, all right. Alan. OK, so County and Zoning had a um, the regular meeting, they just had one item on there where they approved the uh, zone change for the MFPD um, that they've been working on for a few months now. Um, prior to that, there, there was the multi-commission meeting to talk about open space, which was, uh, I thought, a great opportunity for all the various boards to get uh, synced up on kind of where we want to go with open space and really defining the different types of open space that we have in town. Uh, there was also, as uh, you know, with, um, I know all you guys were here, um, a talk from Joe Nichols from the Farm Bureau to kind of give us first their perspective on, you know, strategies for open space. So it was, I think, a great uh, opportunity for everybody to get on the same page so we can start it all going in the same direction on that. Um, Wetlands last night had one application that was approved um, and we're dealing with two violations, but. That's about it. Thank you, sir. Sir. Okay. On September 22nd, the Board of Education met. Superintendent Dr. Patrick Tudrin informed the board that the parent update is no longer weekly. It is now monthly, but information can be found regularly on the Board of Education's website. The district does anticipate losing some staff due to the vaccine mandate, and some staff will not comply with getting tested weekly. I will have an update on numbers after their next meeting. 
Dr. Tudrin also addressed the shortage of bus drivers, which is a national crisis. Thankfully, our school district has seen minimal disruption. Smith Bus is short for drivers, but dispatch has been driving. So all three schools have been covered. Some routes did need to combine and the school district has contracted with other companies for sports games. On September 28th, I did attend that planning and zoning open space workshop that Alan already discussed. Um, on October 4th, the Warehouse Point Board of Fire Commissioners held their regular district meeting, as well as a special meeting to move funds to pay for equipment. The eligible voters of the district voted to move $95,000 from capital improvement for the purchase of fire equipment for their new fire truck and $80,000 from the fund balance to upgrade a compressor and fit testing machine for those Scott air packs that they received the grant for. Um, the new fire apparatus should be completed and arrive to the station by the end of this month. There was also a lengthy discussion on how to proceed with snow removal for the upcoming winter, which will be revisited at their next meeting. The deed has been recorded and the Warehouse Point Fire District has now taken ownership of hose company number one. Um, there were 59 fire calls and 23 fire inspections conducted in September. Sure. Uh, we're now on to the second public participation opportunity for members of the public. Um, same process as before. I'll ask if there are any members here present who would like to address the board, and then I'll address anyone who's here virtually. Are there any? Is there anybody from the public here present who would like to address the board of select? Yes, sir. Curious question. I drove by the park lot out there, and I saw those two poles you're talking about. Yes, sir. Why is one higher than the other? Um, I don't have a good answer for you on that, but I can make height difference between the two. Joe, do you have any information on that? One belongs to CLM or Eversource. The other one that was the one that was just installed and they did not top it or did not put it deep or they didn't drill any farther. So that's the, the taller one is the, the one we just got for nothing. So there you go. They're going to keep it the same. They're not going to make it the same height. They're not going to cut it down. Uh, we have a question for Mr. Philip Owen. Yeah, I'll I'll circle back with him and, and if need be with IBEW. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, name and address, please. Uh, Tom Buckley, King's Court. Inside the question. Just call for six years length. Would this board consider maybe a, a public, a town owned building? To get uh, covered with art, to get covered with what? To have the new commission paint mural or what have you. Well, that's a good idea. Um, I suppose if they were to come come forward with that, I don't see why we wouldn't entertain a conversation at least. Do you have one in mind? Yeah. Is it this one? I'm not the director of that building, so I can't answer. I'm only the deputy director, but. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of highway mural, or that's a that's a good idea for them to consider. They haven't even been seated yet, so they, they've got some work to do. Yeah. But that's and that's a good idea. As as the deputy director in charge of the buildings, that would be the only building that I would allow. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, <laughs> rest are all correct. Just to kind of you know the Hartford Foundation, uh, you know the Greater Together East Windsor Community Fund is also uh, you know seeking proposals. Um, in the town for community service kinds of projects. So just kind of thinking of, you know, I know that um, I know that a mural project or you know any of those kinds of things. So thinking about that, I know that they have thought about some of the things that um, through the through uh, through the service in the human uh, resource department that might be, you know, that might be something that come, would come up. Would be a great uh, application, I think. That's through the board's 16 church tree. Sorry. <laughs> When's the deadline for that application? Is that the 28th? 18th. The application 18th. is to the 18th. Yeah. yeah. So it's on uh, it's on the town our website and also on the Harvard Foundation our website. Then the fun part comes, you guys get to start evaluating applicants. Yes. That is the hard part of that whole process. Yes, it is. <laughs> you may be getting a lot of calls, Jay. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. Well, just I know, just just in terms of 
just in terms of if if some of the people are not a nonprofit and oh. they come to them. Yeah, I, I, I so, spoke with Denise about that. Yes, so I, yeah. that'll come back here soon. Yeah. Later. Um, any other co comments from the general public here present? Okay. Is there anybody online who would like to address the board? Seeing none, uh, we will have an executive session. Um, if somebody could please read the charge included therein and it's to include Tom Clinch, the chief of the emergency management system. No, I'm no. sorry, emergency EMS. I'll make a motion to go into executive session at 759 to include the board of selectmen and um, Thomas Clinch from the uh, ambulance association. Your second? Second. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. We're out of executive session at 9.22 p.m. Uh, is there any further action to come before the Board of Selectmen? Seeing none, is there a motion in order to adjourn? Motion adjourn. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Made by Sarah, seconded by Marie uh, to adjourn at 9.22. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. We are adjourned.